praying I would make it home all right. Believe in God that He would someday save my soul. Well, He did. I thought you'd like to know. Welcome to the East Preston United Baptist Church Mother's Day service, where we are empowering people united and becoming more like Christ. I just ask that we all, uh, we all celebrate Mother's Day here together, even though we are apart. So let us pray. God, I thank you for this time that we have to continue to worship you even during this, uh, this pandemic. Uh, I just ask that you continue to bless us, to keep us safe as you have been, God. Be with our, our first responders, God. Be with our frontline workers, God. And we just ask that you come into each and every residence where this is being viewed at this time, God. We just ask that you put your presence over all those who are listening to your word at this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So on this Mother's Day, I just want to wish all of the mothers of uh, East Preston United Baptist Church and the community of East Preston and everybody who may be watching this at this time a happy Mother's Day. And I know that this year Mother's Day might look a little bit different than it usually does, but we just pray and hope that we are able to celebrate together with each other and um, continue to honor our mothers. And God, I, and we just uh, we just ask that even if your mother is no longer here, you continue to keep your memories of your mother, and uh, and remember the good times that you had with them, and all the times that you shared together as well. Amen. So thank you, Andrew, and all others participating in the worship service this morning. Again, we welcome you this day, a day that we set aside to give honor to all mothers. Whether you are a birth mother, adoptive mother, grandmother, foster mother, stepmother, mother-in-law, auntie, sister, or any woman who has raised or had a hand in raising others' children, we salute and celebrate you this day. Of course, this day means many things to many people. 
For some, it is a day of sorrow or painful reminder. There are some who perhaps do not or did not have a good relationship with their mother. Some may have difficulties with becoming a mother. Then there are some whose children may be inflicting great pain or worry in their life right now or in the past. Some mothers are mourning the loss of their children. Some of you may be waiting to be forgiven by your children for whatever reason. Some of you may be feeling guilty about the way you raised or didn't raise your children. However, as difficult as this day may be for some, it is also a day of great joy for many. And most importantly, it draws our attention to the incredible God-given role that mothers have in the lives of their children. Let us pray. So Father God, we just give you praise and thanks for who you are. You're so gracious and kind and loving. Father, we thank you that you can be all that we need you to be in our lives, Father, and we thank you for your instruction manual that indeed answers any questions that we may have, Father. Father, we lift up all praise, honor, and glory to you. We thank you for the community of East Preston. We thank you for the members of East Preston United Baptist Church that extend beyond. And Father, we just give you praise and thanks for the uh, the pastor, our, our um, interim pastor, Reverend Joyce, our ministerial team and deacons, Father, we just give you praise, honor and glory for their leadership. Father, we just give you thanks for keeping us safe from all harm. Father, we can't praise you enough, but we indeed want to lift up praises to you, Father. You are so good. You are so loving. You are so merciful. And we thank you for mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for new birth that is taking place. We thank you for new life. And we thank you, Father, that you add to your kingdom daily here on earth. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So the title of my message is Highly Favored. And the scripture reference is Luke 1, 26 to 38. And I'll be using the New International Version as reference. Mothers, did you ever consider that you were highly favored with God? A mother's job is hard, but harder still is explaining what a mother's job is. The important thing to understand about a mother's job is that it is not to plan out the life of her children. God already has designed that plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Because, as Jeremiah 1, 5 says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as prophet to the nations. It is a mother's job to understand her role in God's plan, and that is to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Proverbs 22, 6. And mothers, that's why it's so important for us to know God and his word. Let's look at the example of Mary. So Luke 1, 26 to 38 says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was gently troubled at, the, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and, he and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. 
Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who has, was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your words to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So Mary was living a simple life when suddenly everything changed. Mary was propelled from the shadows into the spotlight when the angel appeared to her and said in Luke 1, 26 to 38, which we just read. Mary must have been stunned. All she could manage to say was in verse 34, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Can you imagine her surprise, her shock? Keep in mind, Mary was only about 15 or 16 years old. We think children grow up so quickly nowadays, but back in Mary's day, they were usually married and juggling a couple of children by the time they were 16 and 17. Still, she must have been terribly stunned by it all. And then it hit her. I'm not married. How am I going to explain this to my parents? Not to mention Joseph, whom I am engaged to be married. What will the people think? and say. We know of Joseph's initial reaction, but the Bible doesn't speak of her parents' reaction. I wonder if this was the reason she was sent to live with her cousin Elizabeth. Those two little words, I'm pregnant, changed Mary's life forever, and Mary's life was never the same again. Though the Bible tells us that Mary, though filled with several emotions, saw her pregnancy for what it was, a gift from God. Unlike me, when I found out I was pregnant, my initial reaction was fear, shame, guilt, rejection, concern about my reputation, embarrassment, inconvenience, and how do I escape from all this? Highly favored was not a part of my thoughts. But as time passed, God began to plant seeds of wonder in my mind, and I began to look forward and prepare for the arrival of my baby, despite the fears. Then I thought, what if my baby is deformed because of what I did? But it wouldn't have mattered. All I know is that as time went on, I began not to be consumed by my fears and only to love the life inside of me. In that moment, fear was replaced with life and an overwhelming sense of love. My first words when my daughter was born was, are you sure she came from me? So like Mary, I got into the business of raising my child. But unlike Mary, I wasn't a Christian, and so I was not committed to or devoted to God. I did, however, have a strong moral sense of right and wrong. Still, fear of doing the wrong thing with my child was a problem for me right on through my child-rearing years. Fear manifests itself not only in the apprehension, but also in regret. We mothers are notorious for beating ourselves up with regret. In hindsight, we think, if I had to do it all over again, I would. I wish I had done it this way, or I wish I hadn't done it that way. But we don't have to live this way if we did everything we could with what we had. I now know nothing is impossible with God, and so I take this opportunity to encourage anyone who is pregnant right now, or any mother actively raising her family right now full time, particularly with um, the uh, pandemic that's going on. Um, People are asked to stay in their homes, and we know that for a lot of mothers, that means that they are the ones solely responsible for education and caring and protecting their children. Um, And they're doing that full time. So you may be experiencing extreme frustration. I encourage you to open your Bible if you have one or download a Bible app on your phone or use the internet or read the Bible messages on Facebook. Start a Bible study group. Some of you are really skilled in social media and would have no problem doing that. It's a way to encourage yourself 
God's word is our encouragement. It's the lifter of our souls when we are discouraged. It's God's word that is the only thing that can lift us. Whatever it takes for you to trust in God with all your heart and commit your ways to him, then he will order your steps and direct your path. You may struggle with questions. Do I have what it takes to raise this child or this, these children? You don't, you don't on your own. You need God. Again, nothing is impossible with God. And with God's help, you can raise them to trust and follow Jesus. You can also raise them to be wise and contributing members of society. Second Peter 1, 2 to 3, God has given you everything you need to raise your children. Grace and peace, it says, be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and to Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. That's my only regret, is that I didn't know God when I was raising my daughter. God didn't get me pregnant. I did. But out of my mess came this incredible blessing. God allowed me to carry and birth a beautiful seed who will be called Trisha. We all make mistakes in the past, and we certainly make mistakes or two today. And we will probably make more mistakes tomorrow. Who hasn't? Yet through it all, God will love you, work with you, and accept you. God's desire for every mother is to be godly, not perfect, but righteous. If you have had a godly mother, then you are very fortunate, and you should be very thankful today. Yet for some, remembering your mother brings pain and sadness for you. This day may be a day to start the process of healing, reconciliation, and forgiveness. The Bible is clear on this message of forgiveness. Forgive if you want to be forgiven. In other words, forgiveness is for you. Did you ever ask yourself, what are some of the characteristics of Mary? Why would God chose Mary to raise his only son? Twice in the text, the angel Gabriel told Mary that she was highly favored by God. What about it? What caught, what was it about Mary that caught God's attention? Scripture doesn't give us an answer directly, but Mary's response in verse 38 reveals that she was a Christian and deeply committed to serving God. And Mary wanted God's will above her own. She wanted God's plan for her life, even if the plan made her life more difficult. That quality alone sets her apart from the crowd. When she said to the angel in verse 38, may your word to me be fulfilled, not only did it reveal her obedient spirit, but it also revealed her belief that God could do the impossible. Our problem, at least one of them, is that our God is too small, or our view of him is too small. In fact, we think that we can get along fine, just fine without him. And oftentimes we find ourselves in over our heads. God did not design us to live independently of him. The truth is we need God, and he is big enough to meet our every need. Moms, how big is your God? Do you believe what the angel Gabriel said, that nothing is impossible for him? Do you believe that he can step into your present chaos and bring good out of it? Despite her obvious fears and feelings of inadequacy, Mary saw her unexpected motherhood, or in other words, her unplanned pregnancy, as a gift from God. She rejoiced that God had chosen her to birth his son. Mary's response to this blessing of motherhood was to worship and rejoice in God her Savior. Motherhood is truly a gift, whoever your child may grow up to be. According to the Bible, 
all of us, and all means all, no one is left out of that. All of us are created in God's image, and therefore we all have great worth in God's eyes. So mothers, married or single, we are highly favored. While Mary wasn't a perfect mother, there aren't any of those. She is a role model for us in many ways. Since life is a sacred gift from God, a mother who brings new life into this world is fulfilling the most sacred calling. God understands the burden and anguish of a mother's experience when raising her children or child, especially if she is having to do it alone. We must, just like Christ, show our compassion and support. A Christian mother is uniquely equipped to instill in her children not only faith in God, but also faith in themselves, because she sees in her children not only what they are, but also what they can become with God's grace. Again, life is a blessing to God, no matter how it's conceived. And God chose and designed women for this blessed experience. You are highly favored of God for him to allow you to be responsible to raise up and nurture generation after generation in love and obedience to God, just like Mary. Rejoice in your motherhood. Happy Mother's Day. And I want to take this moment to wish my mother, in particular, Happy Mother's Day. And to tell you, Mom, I love and appreciate you so dearly. And I thank you for your sacrifice. And I thank you for your Christian ways and how you reared us to know God and just to f eventually find God on our own. And I just want to give you thanks today and lift you up. Amen. So after the benediction, um, you'll hear a piece from Deacon Harold in honor of our mothers. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Bless you all. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to you, wonderful mothers. This song is dedicated to you. Somebody pray. And they on their mind Took the time to pray for me I'm so glad they pray I'm so glad they pray I'm so glad they pray for me The preacher prayed for me And they on their mind Took the time and pray I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray.